Hi, I'm Chris, and thanks for checking out this other Winter Moon Games review. Please consider subscribing and hitting that like button, and check me out on Patreon for some great rewards and benefits. It really means a lot to me. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Chris, and welcome to another episode of Winter Moon Games Tabletop Reviews. You'll notice that I'm wearing my Love Thy Nerd shirt. I just want to say that this video is not officially a Love Thy Nerd video, although they do put out a lot of great video and written and audio content for nerds and nerd culture, so definitely check out Love Thy Nerd. I support them monthly, and I also am a member of Love Thy Nerd. It's just loving nerds of all shapes and sizes, and you'll see them at conventions, and you know, feel free to go over and say hello. I'm sure they'd love to talk to you. Today, I'm excited to have Noir Automata in front of me. Not to be confused with Near Automata, which is also supposed to be a great game. I am excited because this was put out by Level 99 Games, which I've reviewed on my show before with Professor Treasure Secret Sky Castle, but also partnership with the actual Penny Arcade. Appropriately enough, I was given this copy at PAX Unplugged, courtesy of the Level 99 Games booth, so thank you for the demo and for the copy of the game. I'm excited because this is a two-player game, and I don't get a lot of those on my show, but it's not just a two-player game. I'm going to be reviewing the two-player variant, but there's actually a three-to-four-player variant and two three-player variants. Today I'm going to be showing off the Killer vs. Inspector mode, which is the two-player version. There's also a Dragnet mode for three to four players, a Spy Tag mode for three players, and a Buddy Cops mode for three players. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take the 25 identity tiles and you're going to lay them out in a 5x5 five five grid. One side has their normal artwork on it, and the other side has a deceased side on it because you are for sure going to be killing some of these people. Then you're going to take the deck of cards and you're going to shuffle them, and you're going to give two to the person who's been chosen to be the killer, and you're going to give three to the person who's been chosen to be the inspector. The the killer takes one of the cards he has and puts it aside and keeps the other one in their hand. The inspector is going to choose one of the characters from the three, or you can choose randomly I suppose, and you're going to put it in front of you face down. These cards are going to be played face down. They may be face up during this review, but they're always played face down until further notice. The one that inspector chooses is actually his identity. These cards match the 5x5 five five tile grid on the table. So let's say for instance that the inspector chooses to be Zeke. Zeke is in this grid, he's actually over here in the second row, so that is the inspector's identity for the entirety of the game. Now the killer, on the other hand, gets an identity and a disguise. They're both going to be people on the 5x5 five five grid, again, same exact concept. I have Ursula and I also have Rita. So I'm going to just start because Ursula's in my hand, this is my identity, and Rita is going to be my disguise. And I'll explain a little bit more about that as we go. Now I'll kind of take on the role of both the inspector and the killer, obviously for demo purposes. So the first thing the killer is going to do is they're going to kill someone. They have to flip that tile over. Now they can only kill someone that is adjacent to the card they are currently holding in their hand. So in my case, Ursula. So Ursula is way down here in the bottom left hand corner of the grid, which is a bit problematic for me because that means I can only kill these three people that are adjacent to me right now. Adjacent actually means up, down, left, right, or diagonal. So with Ursula, not all hope is lost because I can kill Jimmy. And if I kill Jimmy, I flip his tile over to the deceased side. Now the inspector knows that I would have had to be someone adjacent to Jimmy in order to kill him. Now that's the killer's turn. Now on the inspector's turn, he can do a number of different things, but one of his main components is something called exonerating. If I have these two cards, Nixie and Gloria, in my hand as the inspector, I know that these two people are not one of the killer's identity. Therefore, on my turn, I would take, let's say, Gloria, and I'm going to place Gloria on her matching tile on the table. And she is now marked as innocent. Now what that does is I'm saying to the killer, okay, I've exonerated Gloria, so if I was any of these people around Gloria, I would have to say yes. When I'm asking the killer if he's adjacent to Gloria, what I'm asking if it's that's the card that's in his hand currently, not his disguise, which I'll get into in my next explanation. In this case, the killer would say, no, I'm not adjacent to Gloria, because I'm way down here as Ursula, so they're way off. So that's the end of their turn, and now it's the killer's turn again. Now there's a couple other things that both the inspector and the killer can do other than kill and exonerate. Those are shift and collapse. 
Shifting and collapsing actually allows you to move tiles around to either reposition tiles of your choice or make it a little bit easier for the inspector to narrow down who you are. To shift, all you do is you pick a row or a column and you slide everything in one direction. And you take the tile that fell off and you just move it to the end. Collapsing is a little bit trickier and actually requires you to have at least one dead person in every column or every row. What you do is you'll actually remove one dead person from every column or row, and then you'll collapse the board and make it smaller, So, but it's still an even grid. Collapsing is not something we did a lot in my games. Uh, in fact, when I did the demo at PAX, we didn't collapse at all, and the game was still very playable. It's not necessarily something I found to be required. You don't have to shift people who are adjacent to you. You can shift any row or column, which makes things a lot more complicated for the inspector. Now, the other option I can do as the killer on my turn is change disguises. And what that means is the current card that I have, Ursula, I would just swap it out for my other card, which is Rita. Now I'm Rita, and I can only kill tiles that are adjacent to Rita. Ursula is no longer in play for now. The bluffing comes into play a little bit for the killer here because you don't actually have to change disguises when you say you are changing disguises. You can pretend you did and I can just remain Ursula and he'll be none the wiser. In fact, what's funny about this is I just realized that Rita in this grid is right next to Ursula. So this makes my life a lot more difficult because they're both in the very same corner. So I would have to do a lot more shuffling around before I probably decided to kill anyone again. Now, as the inspector's turn, there are two more things that he can do on his turn. One is accuse and one is solve. They are very different things. Now, if you'll remember from the setup, Zeke has been chosen as the inspector's identity. Now, if any point the killer kills Zeke, the game is over and the killer wins. But he's still alive in this demo. And to accuse someone, he can only accuse, as the inspector, someone who is adjacent to Zeke. Now that's dangerous for the inspector because what that does is it reveals to the killer that whoever was just accused is also adjacent to the inspector, therefore narrowing it down and making it easier to potentially kill the inspector. Now solving the crime is a very different story. Solving is when the inspector believes they know exactly who the killer's identity is and secret disguise. To solve the crime and win the game, the inspector has to name the exact two identities on the side of the killer, which means he would have to name Ursula and Rita at the same time. If he is wrong about either guess, the game is over and he loses. Likewise, if at any point the killer kills 10 people, the game is over and the inspector loses. So there's a lot more ways for the inspector to lose. The killer definitely has an advantage. I played both roles and I had fun with both roles. If you're a person who likes strategy and likes kind of cat and mouse games, you're going to love being the inspector. It is not always easy to be the killer, however. The killer has to stay one step ahead and always be thinking two or three moves ahead. And knowing when to switch your identity and your disguise is key in this game. Noir Automata is a great light strategy two-player game in the killer versus inspector mode, but definitely check out the other game modes too because it's a lot of fun to be had here and a ton of replay value. This game was designed by D. Brad Talton Jr. and it was published by Level 99 Games partnered with Penny Arcade. Thank you again to Level 99 and Penny Arcade for the opportunity to review your game. I had a ton of fun with it. Based on just the two-player game variant alone, I'm going to go ahead and give Noir Automata 5 out of 5 moons, a perfect score. As always, you can check out more Winter Moon Games tabletop reviews at wintermoongames.com slash reviews. Find me on your social media platform of choice, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. If you have a comment about Noir Automata or you'd like me to review or preview your game, send me an email to cb at wintermoongames.com. I would love to hear from you. Please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video, and even consider supporting me on Patreon. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Until next time, my name is Chris and thanks very much for watching.